श्री पराशक्ति विद्यालय सी बी एस ई क्लास नाइन स्टैंडर्ड सुजेक्ट बायोलॉजी गुड मॉर्निंग माई डे स्टूडेंट्स नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अबाउट द लेसन इम्प्रूवमेंट इन फूड रिसोर्सेज इन द लेसन द फर्स्ट स्टेप सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर एंड ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग सेकेंड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ क्रॉप थर्ड इम्प्रूवमेंट इन क्रॉप यील्ड फोर्थ द क्रॉप वेरेटी इम्प्रूवमेंट फिफ्थ क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन मैनेजमेंट सिक्स्थ क्रॉप प्रोटक्शन मैनेजमेंट सेवेंथ एनिमल हस्पैंड्री एट्थ कैटल फॉर्मिंग नाइन्थ फॉल्ट्री फॉर्मिंग टेंथ फिश फॉर्मिंग फिशरीज लास्ट बी कीपिंग अपीकल्चर first introduction of this lesson food is the basic and essential requirement of all the living organisms isn't it and the food is the ultimate source of energy it is required for the growth development and repair processes it also protect the organisms from various diseases in fact all living organisms in the biosphere need food to obtain energy and for proper body functioning we get our food from plants and animals we get a variety of food like cereals vegetables and fruits from different parts of the plants like root stem leaf seed and fruit we get milk eggs meat etc from animals to fulfill our nutritional requirement plants are autotrophs and prepare their own food through a process called photosynthesis already we are studying eighth standard what is auto uh, what is photosynthesis the plant take carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll and give out oxygen and glucose by the process is called photosynthesis animals cannot prepare their own food human beings also cannot prepare their own food they are called heterotrophs on the contrary animals are heterotrophs and depend upon plants and other animals for their food that is they are unable to prepare their food like autotrophs autotrophs means plants in ancient times people used to hunt animals and gather fruits from forests to fulfill their nutritional requirements nowadays various food yielding plants and animals are reared under human supervision the two specialized with specialized fields that deal with it or agriculture that acquire mean feed culture means cultivation of field and animal husbandry that is the domestication of animals agriculture refers to the applied science that deals with the mass production of plants which are useful for human beings next to the first step sustainable agriculture and organic farming the population of our country is about 1.2 billion and it stands second in the world in terms of populations the population of population of our country is increasing very rapidly and is expected to reach 1.3 billion by the year 2020 to fulfill the food requirement of such a large population we need to produce around 241 million tons of grains annually this can only be done by improving the crop yield and production of livestock livestock or domesticated animals reared for various purposes our country has achieved such success in increasing the production of food to some extent because of certain new discoveries and technique introduced in the area of science and technology this is known as green revolution that means increased production of food grains then white revolution increased the production of milk 
what is the color of the milk white that is white revolution what is the color of the crab green that mean green revolution what is the color of the sea blue so the fish there is the yellow revolution increased production of oil and blue revolution increased production of fish scientists are now aiming at golden revolution increased production of pulses also the natural resources of our country that is land soil water fossil fuels etc are being more and more exploited to reach the goal of increased food production for the for the ever increasing human population due to this increased exploitation the balance of our nature resources has been disturbed and has created following problems soil erosion loss of soil fertility soil erosion means manneripu manvalam soil fertility idala theriyum ungalku nenikira soil erosion loss of soil fertility floods droughts then Uh, eutrophication eutrophication means excessive nutrients in the body of water that means uh, eutrophication then extinction of flora and fauna then biomagnification of toxic substances pollution of air water and soil thus the need of the hover is to take necessary measure to increase food production without causing damage to the environment and affecting the natural balance that is sustainable development adoption of sustainable practice practices in agriculture and animal husbandry is the best way to increase food production without depletion of natural resources and uh, disturbance in the natural balance the successful management of agricultural resources to satisfy the changing human needs while maintaining or enhancing the quality of environment and conserving the natural resources is called sustainable agriculture sustainable agriculture includes practices like crop rotation that is for control of pest and soil erosion mixed farming intercropping and integrated agriculture next we are going to see the advantages advantages of sustainable agriculture it achieve the combination of the biological cycles first point second by it helps in the production of production and renewability of the soil fertility third it manages the use of farms resources to the optimum fourth one it minimizes the population sorry minimizes the pollution and the use of non renewable resources fifth one it helps to get an adequate and reliable income then last sixth point it provides new and better opportunities for the farming community of the country next organic farming and its advantages first organic farming what is organic farming the the practice of farming with the maximum use of manures bio fertilizers and bio pesticides with a healthy cropping system and no or minimal use of chemicals as fertilizers herbicides and pesticides are called organic farming next advantages of organic farming first point the organic crops are safe to consume as they contain no or minimal traces of pesticides second it helps in the maintenance of healthy soil third point it also increases the water holding capacity of the soil fourth one it helps in recycling of farm waste fifth it does not cause environmental pollution last point the cropping patterns used in organic farming in organic farming help to control the insect pests and weeds next step production of crop crops are the plants which are grown by humans on a large large area for food and other uses like fodder for animals and fibers for cloths etc 
for successful production of crops we must understand the growth and the development of crops factors affecting their growth and management of crops first one a general classification of crops generally crops are classified into three categories which are as follows uh, field crops example the food grains pulses oil seed etc second one plantation crops example tea coffee rubber cocoa etc third one garden crops fruits vegetables and ornamental plants next to be commercial classification of crops the crops can be can can also be classified commercially as follows first food crops for example rice wheat maize oil seeds spices vegetables and fruits second fodder crops example oats sorghum parsley sudan grass sudan grass then third one commercial crops example cotton jute sugar cane and tobacco next food crops food crops are the crops which are raised to meet the food requirement of human beings food crops include cereals pulses oil seeds fruits and vegetables the food crops provide carbohydrate proteins fats minerals and vitamins cereals provide food in the form of carbohydrates which help us to gain energy pulses provide the proteins and oil seeds fulfill our requirement of fats apart from cereals pulses and oils we also require vitamins and minerals which are available in fruits and vegetables they also contain lot of fibers in them which are easily digestible digestible and make our digestive system strong next fodder crops fodder crops are those crops which are grown to feed the livestock such as cattle they include barsim oats sorghum sudan grass etc then commercial crops commercial crops are those crops which are grown for the purpose of income import and export such as cotton jute sugar cane sugar beet tobacco etc next rabi crops already was studying in 8th standard i think rabi crops they are grown in winter season that is in month of october to november and are harvested in march to april the major rabi crops that are grown in the season are wheat gram pea sugarcane mustard and linseed these are all example then karif crops they are grown in rainy season that is in month of june to july and harvested in september to october the major crops cultivated as karif crops are paddy soya bean maize cotton black gram arkar then millets etc these are all the example of karif crops